Growing your own veggies at home is one of the most rewarding things you can do, and it's good for you. And if for no other reason, at least you know what's gone into producing the food that you eat. So my mission over the next two and a half minutes is to show you how to set up the best possible veggie patch. Firstly, an open, sunny position is vitally important. Most veggies love full sun in the spring and a little afternoon shade in the summer months is always good. And then you need to add an activating ingredient. Once upon a time, I might have used blood and bone, but with this combination of minerals and beneficial soil microbes, I add this particularly unique fertiliser. It's got 24 carefully selected beneficial microbes that do all sorts of good things, including turning the 60 micro and macronutrients in the controlled release minerals into soluble fertiliser for your plants. That cultivated into the topsoil boosts the soil fertility and nutrient levels. Now, one of the most vitally important parts of any veggie garden is getting the soil right. And if you've got a heavy soil base, I've got a stony, rocky base here, it's really good to lift the bed up. Now, the soil you use in the bed is also critical. And you can see I've got a really rich, organic, but sandy soil. This free draining soil is so important with getting the best results out of your veggies. One of the most important things is making sure you use only quality plants. If it's seedlings, don't buy plants that are yellow or taller than the label in the punnet. To remove them, squeeze one side of the cell and then the other side and ease the seedlings out gently, avoiding damaging roots. And the other important thing is to soak them in a bucket of sea salt diluted in water. Now this helps reduce transplant shock. My planting technique, it's different. I like to mix my veggies up. Not plant in big groups ideally, but to mix different plants alongside each other. There's a few different reasons why I do it. The first is, in nature, diversity is important in attracting pollinators and distracting predators, and not draining the soil of specific nutrients as each plant has different nutrient demands. Now, to get them off to the best start, I always water them in with a bit of sea soil as well. It just triggers a bit more growth, but you know what, they can do their own thing for the next four weeks. They don't need any feeding or anything else done. Then in about four weeks time, to get the very best results, I'm gonna feed them on a weekly basis with power feed. You know, the most important thing is that you only plant what you actually need, what you're going to use, and that way you can rotate your crops on a regular basis. This is such a fun thing to do, and there's nothing tastes better than growing your own food.